Hello and welcome to the Greenfoot video tutorials. My name is Michael Kölling and today I will sh tell you a little bit about how to initialize your Greenfoot world. Um, I have here a project already open, it's a crab project, and I have already implemented some behavior in my crab class and I've got a leaf class here. I can show you what I've got. I can put a crab into my world and I can put some leaves into the world. Remember shift clicking in the world is a shortcut to creating objects so I can create some objects here by clicking. If I now run my scenario um, the crab runs across the screen. I can control it with my keyboard and I can um, eat those leaves here. Um, this is all well and good. Let's assume this is the whole behavior I want. I'm pretty much finished implementing the behavior of my crab. The problem now is that every time I compile all the objects disappear again and every time I want to um, try out my program again I have to manually recreate all these objects and that is getting a bit tedious after a while. Um, also of course when I export this project, that is if I run it outside of Greenfoot I will not have the class diagram here at the side. I will not have the ability to interactively create any objects. So if I exported the project as it is now, I would have no objects in the world. The state of the object would be just after it is um, after a reset, which is blank of the object. So um, what I want to achieve now is I want to um, set up the world automatically so that all the objects are placed in the world um, without me having to do it manually. The way I can achieve that in Greenfoot quite easily is by writing code in the in my world class, in, the, in my case my crab world class. What happens in Greenfoot is that every time you have a successful compile operation, if I compile the class get compiled, every time this is successful um, an object of the crab world class is automatically created. So this class here is automatically instantiated and the sand colored area that I see here, that is the object of the Crab World class. When I click Reset, by the way, the same happens. A reset just creates a new object of the Crab World class. When this object gets created, if we open up the editor, we see here is a constructor for this object. Of course, as part of the creation of this object, the constructor of this object here is also executed. So I when I when the compile happens, the create of the object happens, this constructor is being executed. Now I can automatically insert objects into my world by adding code to my constructor here um, that automatically creates one of my actor objects and places it in the world. The world class has a method called addObject which takes three parameters. The first parameter is the object I want to create. Let's say new crab. So here I'm creating a new crab um, and I'm adding this to my world. And the second and third parameter are the x and the y coordinates. Um, let's say I use 300 for my x coordinate, 200 for my y coordinate. So I'm adding a new crab at 300, 200. We can try that out. If I now compile, I automatically get a crab added somewhere in the world. So that is the that's already the most basic trick you need to know to automatically get created um, objects created in the world. Every time you compile now your object will automatically reappear. Now what I might want to do here is I want to say add this crab exactly in the middle of the world and now I could see how big the world is. I've got 560 by 460 pixels. So I can just divide that by 2 and say, OK, I want this um, to appear at 280. Um, but to make it a bit more robust, I don't want to hard code this number. I rather compute the number so that if I later change my mind and change the size of the world, that this always is exactly the middle. So I can just say get width. This gives me the width of the world divided by 2. That is then the midpoint. And here, the y coordinate, I just say get height, oops, get height of the world divided by 2. So if I take the width divided by 2, the height divided by 2, if I compile this, now this will appear exactly in the middle. 
The other thing I could do now is I can add some leaves. There are two possibilities. I can now add, oh, sorry, add object and then say I want to add a new leaf. Um, somewhere I just make up some coordinates here, doesn't really matter so much. Um, and that way I can of course also add some leaves. Let's say I want to have 30 leaves in the world, so I want a lot. Um, first of all, that would be uh, rather tedious to, I would now have to replicate this line 30 times. It is um, rather better than to do this in a loop rather than to repeat that line so many times. 